Hi everyone, how's it going? Today I want to discuss a situation that is bad. A situation where you get stuck on a motorway, you get stuck on a, on a road somewhere and it starts to snow heavily and you cannot turn around, you cannot do anything, you get stuck there and you have to basically wait for, for someone to get and rescue you. It's a bad situation, I hope none of you get in this situation, but I do realize uh, it's likely that someone will get into this situation. Some parts of the country, some parts of Europe are more frequently having these situations so I understand that some people mostly not EV owners but some people are very very concerned and this time of the year when it's it's really cold and it's snowing and and stuff like this that they will get with their EV stuck and you will die in your EV or something like that so Here's a video explaining some of the theory that's going behind. How long can you actually stay in your electric vehicle, let's say, with the heating turned on. And I will compare it to a gas car with a petrol car. And I will give you some tips on what you should do in such a situation. And uh, I will also do a test at the end of the video. I will use the Dacia Spring that I already gave back. But it's a, it's a small car. It's a small battery car. And it's not a very efficient car. It's not very well in insulated so it will be interesting to see how long can you actually stay with the heating on comfortably in the car so yeah this will be the video today and let's start with some recommendations now if you see that there is a really bad weather it's starting to snow really heavily it's really really cold and traffic is slowing down if you have any opportunity try to turn around to the nearest city or if there's not much left to the, f the next city or the next village try to if you arrive to the next village or city stop there and yeah just don't continue it, it doesn't matter if you're in an electric car it doesn't matter if you're in a diesel or petrol car situation can get worse really really quickly and you don't want to be in any car stranded on the road waiting for someone to rescue you so if you can turn around or arrive to the next city stop there and wait for the storm to pass if you cannot stop for some reason maybe you cannot turn around maybe the nearest city is too far away or whatever maybe there's an accident on the road and you have to stop there and you cannot turn around maybe you're on the highway or something and you actually get stuck well my next recommendation is see if there are people around you see if there are other people in the same situation and try to sit with other people in the car don't sit alone in the car. It's really, really inefficient to heat up the car just for yourself. It's way, way better to get into someone else's car and sit with them or other people to come in your car and they sit with you in your electric car. If you're driving an electric car, it doesn't matter. And you should sit in one car as many people as you can because bodies emit heat. You can, you know, you can talk. You are less likely to panic. You are uh, less likely to uh, do some stupid decisions like starting to go on your own, on your feet to the next city or something like that. So group in some cars, stay in one car with the heating on until you have like 10% battery left or 10% of your gas tank left just so you can actually start driving when the situation gets uh, cleared and, and you can start driving so you're not you're not leaving the car there it's also a good thing because you can share food or like biscuits or water whatever you have in the car maybe some other person has more maybe you don't have anything but you can share so it's way way better to group in one car and wait for the emergency services together this way you can extend the time that you can wait in comfort let's say for the emergency services so these were the tips i think these are quite common sense but i wanted to say them anyway and next we'll talk about the theory so why are people scared Scared of getting stuck with an EV in a snowstorm well there's some logic behind it and I will explain that now with a gas car the engine is actually emitting a lot of heat and that heat actually goes into the cabin only 40% of the actual gas that you're burning turns into rotation of the wheels so 40% of the energy is converted into rotation of the wheels 60% is lost heat well that heat goes into the cabin and in such a situation you can actually heat up the cabin very nicely so actually the inefficiency of the gas car is turning into a positive thing in this situation now in an electric car you're using the main battery to heat up the cabin which is not necessarily an inefficient thing but the power that the battery can store is much less than the 
power that the gas tank can store. So yeah, this is the reason why with an electric car you cannot actually stay that long, but we will see in the test how long actually you can stay. So you cannot stay that long in an electric car in the winter just with the heating on compared to a gas car. Okay, so let's talk actual numbers. With the gas car it's about 0.7 liters of fuel every hour that you're using up to run the motor. So if your tank is about 40 liters you can actually stay 57 hours in the car if your tank is full and let's say if it's half full then you can stay about 28 hours. Now with an electric car the consumption is about one kilowatt hours per hour. This depends obviously on the outside temperature, it depends on um, if you have a heat pump, if you're how big the car is actually and how well insulated it is but let's say you have one kilowatt hours consumption per hour just to have the numbers really uh, easy to understand and you have a 50 kilowatt hour battery obviously there are cars that have 60 70 80 kilowatt hours even 100 but let's say you have a 50 kilowatt hour battery and your consumption is one kilowatt hours per hour and then you can actually stay 50 hours with a full tank. So compared to the gas car where you can stay 57 hours with the uh, electric car, depending on how big the battery is, blah, 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 you can stay 50 hours in this example. Now, if the battery is half full, you can stay 25 hours, obviously. So with the theory out of the way, let's see the test. I've done the test a few weeks ago. It was much, much colder. Now today it's about seven degrees, but when I did the test, it was zero degrees, something like that. I did the test overnight. So they were minus four, minus five. I will put the chart on the screen from that night so you can see how, how low temperatures were on that night. But I started the test with 79% uh, in the car. So that means it's about 21 kilowatt hours in the battery because the, the car has either 27.4 or 26.8 if you don't know why i'm saying that then you can check out another video but let's say it's 27.4 what dacia claims so um, from my test the car is pulling about 1.2 kilowatt hours per hour to heat up the cabin on the first level of uh, ventilation and about middle usage of the temperature gauge i left the car 14 hours overnight with the heating on i had a bluetooth thermometer that actually shows history of the uh, temperatures in the car and I actually uh, came in the car a few times just to adjust a little bit the uh, temperature and the ventilation because the car does not have automatic heating system so I had to adjust a little bit just to make sure I'm not making 20 degrees in the car or it's not falling below let's say 16 or 15 degrees because i think when you are in a really bad situation like this 17 18 degrees in the car is more than reasonable it's more than enough so you won't be doing like 20 22 degrees in the car because you're trying to preserve as much energy as you can so i will leave the car 14 hours and i think after 14 hours the, the battery should still have about 4.2 kilowatt hours which means it should still have about 15 percent in the morning at around 7 when I will uh, stop the uh, test. Okay so let's see the actual test. I started it at 520. At the beginning I actually put the heating to a higher setting because it was quite cold in the car so I put the heating to a higher setting and then after about 20 minutes or 15 minutes something like that I came into the car and I lowered it to the first position on the ventilation and less than half on the heating settings so that was a uh, setting that I saw that is working quite well with the car the car is not very insulated so compared to other cars it's losing a lot of the heat that you're putting into it so from this point of view it's not very efficient but regardless I left the car until the morning I came a few times like I said just to check on the temperature and I recorded the whole process I recorded a time lapse and I recorded also uh, the uh, dish charge of the battery and the power consumption over the whole period with the Kanzi E app and the Bluetooth adapter so I have accurate measurement of what actually happened. So next is the time lapse of what happened. Enjoy!
Okay, so in the morning when I got into the car at 7.20, there were a few error messages and um, yeah, I turned off the car, I turned it back on and they partially went away, but the car would still not drive. So I turned it off again and turned it back on again. And after a few seconds, the OK light came on and everything worked just fine. Now regarding the error messages, I don't know why they appeared, I looked at the footage, it looks like they appeared after about 10 hours of the car sitting, it was quite cold, maybe the sensors, the ABS or the ESP sensors, uh, they don't really like sitting in the cold without the wheels actually moving, so they froze up and the dashboard uh, threw some error messages, but like I said, I just turned it off uh, once or twice and then uh, the car just drove perfectly fine. The battery was actually higher than I expected. I expected 15%, but it actually was at 18%. And here are some pictures showing you guys that the uh, temperature in the cabin never really dropped below 17 degrees. It was constantly between 17 and 19 degrees. So it actually looks like that uh, the car consumed even less power while it was turned on and only using the uh, heating in the car basically. Okay, so what is the verdict? As you can see in the morning, I still had 18% left. So it's actually a bit more than I predicted. I predicted about 15%. So actually the car consumed a bit less energy than I anticipated, which is good. But like I said, other cars can consume even less or a bit more depending on how big the car is and how well insulated it is and how efficient the heating system is uh, after all. Also, if you have a bigger battery, you can stay a lot longer. But let's say that this car with, uh, with the heating on and everything can stay at least 25 hours in the cold now it depends on how cold it is if it's like minus 15 or minus 30 degrees or something you're living in siberia then you will have to turn on the heating a little bit more and then it's uh, it's less but in normal conditions it's not normal but in uh, in usual situations this car with a small battery can actually uh, give you heating for 25 hours if it's fully charged obviously and even a little bit more to be honest because the car has a really big reserve battery capacity i did a really really nice test so you can check out one of the other videos car has actually a lot bigger battery so 25 hours with the dacia spring let's say if you have a uh, volkswagen id3 you can stay 50 58 60 hours in the in the freezing cold i mean if nobody comes to rescue you in 10 15 or or 20 hours it's really really bad also like i said you should not stay uh, alone in the car if you have the possibility ask other people to stay with you in the car you will be able to use less energy to heat the car because bodies emit heat and you will not need to um, heat the car that much so i think this myth or this uh, uh, concern of people who are not actually ev owners has a little bit of uh, background i understand that you can actually stay a little bit longer with a with a gas car but like I showed you, you can actually stay a lot with any car, even a small car like the Tatcha Spring. And if you have a bigger car with a bigger battery, 50, 60, 70, 80 kilowatt hours, you can stay a lot, lot longer and you will be rescued if you uh, call the emergency services, I, I'm sure that they can come in 5, 10, 15 hours. So, so yeah, it's a situation that I hope nobody gets in. It's a situation that if you get in, you will get out, no problem, even if you're driving an electric vehicle. And as time passes, batteries will be bigger, uh, the heating systems will be more efficient. So I really think we can put this concern too bad and nobody should actually be really really concerned about this situation because it, it doesn't really happen that often and even if it happens you can see that you can stay for tens of hours with absolutely no problem in the car so 
this was the video for today. This was the test, the theory and everything. I hope you really liked it. I hope you enjoyed it. I was listening to you guys. A lot of people said that I should be doing videos in English. Well, here's another video in English. I think I'll still be doing some other videos in Romanian because I think some of the things that I want to say and, and discuss with the Romanian people should be in Romanian. They should not be uh, looking for some translations on the YouTube page. You can actually translate these videos if you turn on the translation and then go on to settings and do auto translate to any other language but still some of the things I want to discuss are specific to Romania so there will still be uh, some videos in Romanian but I'm thinking of switching to English so if you like this English content and I know most of my audience even the Romanian ones hi guys are really good in English and they understand me in English as well so if you want to see some more English content then let me know in the comments and uh, I will respond and I will see that there's a lot of people interested in English co content so yeah maybe I will do some more English content but like I said I will still do some Romanian content as well so this was the video for today I hope you liked it if you liked it press a like share it if you think that somebody would be interested in this content and see you in the next video. Bye!